Hey guys, welcome back. Stats Guru here. In this video, I want to talk about comparing Z scores and what performed better. So I had some fun with this. I wanted to come up with a couple examples, which I've come up with three, where we look at two different Z scores and then we're going to make a comparison and see where we actually performed better. Sometimes we may think that we scored better uh, than a class average or below a class average. Um, but in this case, we're going to calculate those z-scores and then compare them to see where we actually performed better. So let's jump right into the first example. In this first example, we scored on two final exams, and then we're going to compare those scores to the class average using z-scores. So our first test that we had was a history test, and we scored 80%. And the other test we had that week was a biology exam and we scored 74%. So who performed better? Is it here or is it here? Well, to do that, we will calculate the z-scores accordingly and compare them and find out. So we know that the average for the history test was 83% and that had a standard deviation of two. And we know that the average for the biology class was 76, and that had a standard deviation of 3. So we can use this information to calculate our z-scores. So what do we have? We know that our score was 80. We know that the class average was 83. We're going to divide by 2, and that equals negative 1.50. So that's for history. And then for our biology, let's do that in a different color here, we're going to have 74 minus 76, and then we're going to divide that by 3, and that equals negative 0.67, and that is for biology. So in looking at these scores, we see that history was negative 1.50, standard deviations away from the mean while our biology exam was actually negative 0.67. So if we were to draw this on a graph of the standard normal curve, we have our average here in the middle. What we're seeing is we're seeing history is negative 1.50 and we're seeing biology is negative 0.67. So in terms of who performed better or what test did we perform better on, we can see that we actually performed better when compared to the class average on the biology exam. So because our standard deviations are lower, it means that we are closer to class average. Even though we scored an 80 on the history exam, uh, it was actually further from class average compared to biology, which was actually closer. So in this case, biology is in fact the winner. So let's go ahead and do our next example. So let's say we have two dogs that are in a dog park having fun together. Um, we have a lab and a husky. We know that labs on average as a group or a breed they average about 22 miles per hour with a standard deviation of 2.8. Huskies run 28 miles per hour on average with a standard deviation of 1.4. Let's say that the lab is playing with the husky in the dog park and is running at 25 miles per hour while the husky runs 29 miles per hour. So who is actually running faster when we compare them back to their breed average? So to do this, we need to calculate the z-scores for each dog and then compare it back to their breed averages. And once we find those z-scores, we can then compare them between one another. So let's look at the first one. So the first one is the lab. So to do that, we have our dog. The lab is running 25. And we know on average they run 22. And we're going to divide that by the 2.8 standard deviation, which then we get 
1.07 as our z-score. And then we have the Husky. And he's running at 29 miles per hour. And we know on average they run 28 miles per hour. And we're going to divide by the 1.4 standard deviation. And when we do that, we get a 0.71 z-score. So now if we were to draw these curves respectively to their breeds with the average in the middle, we know that the lab is 1.7 above, while the husky is 0.71 above. So in this case, we can see that the lab is actually running faster when we compare it to its breed average. Even though the Husky is running faster in miles per hour, it isn't deviating much. It's not deviating that far off from its average speed, whereas the lab is actually 1.7 standard deviations above its average, meaning that the lab is actually running faster when compared to its breed. So that's the second example, just comparing z-scores. Let's go ahead and look at a third example. So let's say we have two turtles, and we're going to compare their swim times underwater. So we know that painted turtles average about 4.2 minutes with a standard deviation of 0.76 as a group, and snappers average about 6.3 minutes with a standard deviation of 0.44. Our painted turtle lasted 5.3 minutes underwater, and our snapper turtle lasted 6.9 minutes underwater. So who performed better underwater when comparing them to their breed or their species? So to do that, we know that our painted turtle, he lasted 5.3 minutes, and the average is 4.2 and the standard deviation is 0.76 and then we have our snapper so he lasted 6.9 minutes and they average about 6.3 and the standard deviation is 0.44 so the painted turtle z-score is approximately 1.45 and the snapping is approximately 1.36. So who performed better? Well, if we again draw this on the graph just to represent what it looks like, we have the averages in the middle. And we see that our painted turtle was 1.45 standard deviations above average. And we see that our snapper was 1.36 standard deviations above average. And we know that this z-score here for the painted turtle is in fact larger than this one. So the painted turtle is the winner when comparing it to its species average. So those were three examples that I walked through just comparing z-scores. Sometimes you may see some examples like this. If there's any other questions or topics that you would like worked on, make sure to comment down below. And as always, like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.